Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're here for worship on whatever it is, the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany here at Gethsemane Lutheran Church. Of course, those of you that are here know where you are. Uh, so, and um, hello to those watching us online. And um, so we are, um, we are here, we are on, we're hearing um, healing stories. We're, we're reading through John. I hope you've figured that out by now. There's a, John is very different from Mark, Matthew, and Luke. And in John, um, there's only three healing stories. We're going to get the third one another day, but we're getting two of them today. Um, so we're, we're going to have that. Um, when you read the lesson, the last verse is in there twice, just to keep you awake. Um, so the last verse is at the end. The last verse is also right in the middle here. Um, so I've crossed it out, so I don't read it. Um, I'm not going to tell you when I skip it. I'm just hoping you can kind of... All right. It's the last line of the top paragraph, if that helps you. All right. Um, we are collecting, I, I, have, I continue to say this, I am really shocked, amazed, I don't know, shock's the right word, at how generous you've been through First Fruits. I really didn't know how this was gonna go. We were gonna start in March of 2020, or April of 2020, but then with COVID, we just, you know, didn't do it. <laughs> we weren't even here, you know. Um, and you, last year, we, over nine months, you gave over $5,000 to the First Fruits. I'm really just, you know, reminder, if it's an optional thing, we're asking for one hour's wages a month. Um, and we're do, raising for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, um, which is a national charity which helps this horrible disease um, that people, I guess, are born with and, are getting, and they have it their whole life. Um, can't really cure it, you control it. Um, and, and there's, we've had friends of the congregation that have had it and stuff. Um, there's a, this handout sheet is in the back. Um, it's two-sided. There's also a picture on the bulletin board about a particular family that's been affected by this disease. Um, so, and I know we've been getting some money for this already because we started this in January. So, right, Casey, we've been getting some money for that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Praying for the Olympics, for uh, peace among all the nations. Um, Reformation Lutheran Church in West Long Branch. Fun fact. That congregation was founded the very same day as this congregation. Wow. Yeah. Same year? Same year, same day. Yeah, same day. Yeah, because, well, all right, we're online. I'll tell you the whole story later. But when I figured it out, when we were celebrating our 75th and that congregation was celebrating the 75th, I was like, hey, what day were you for? And they're like, September 27th. I'm like, wow, we are too. So, um, but that's how I found that out. Um, okay. Um, you, you should have either had your giving statement mailed to you or it should be in the back. If, it's not in the back. If you haven't received it in the mail right now, let us know. Um, there's a sign-up sheet for flowers and for um, pray, paying for the candles. So if you want to do that, dedicate flowers, you can do that. Um, if you want to bring in your old dry palms and I'll burn them for ashes on Ash Wednesday, um, just bring them in this month and leave them on that what used to be the coffee table because we're not having coffee. So leave them there. I'll, I'll put them safely in my office. Uh, food pantry, um, they're getting about 300 families a day now. They're still open two days a week. Um, no, 300 families a month, not a day. 300 families a month, okay. 300 families, but it's still a huge amount. Um, but we're, we're asking for canned veggies, but once again, you can bring whatever you want. Um, Tuesday, there's council meeting, so if you're on council, you have a meeting Tuesday night. So, and that'll be the new council. I didn't install the council. I just said that online. We, at some point, will install the council. <laughs> we'll figure out when that will be, Tuesday night. Uh, okay. I wanna thank all of you for coming out in the cold. I appreciate that. Dave and Paul and I were lonely last week, so. <laughs> Let's take a moment of quiet. Mm -hmm. 
Please rise as you are able uh, and join me for the confession which is in the green bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Um, you may rise as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you always. Share a sign of peace. Right. Um, we are now singing hymn 673, God who's almighty word, the first and last verse. I think it's one and four, but the first and last verse of hymn 673, and your yellow cards will be collected now. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of miracles, sometimes we are slow to believe in your power, even when your miracles occur around us each and every day. Open our eyes to see and our hearts to believe. Amen. Um, I didn't, you may be seated for the psalm. I did not say this in announcements, and I meant to. Um, I am referring to the psalm. I, I, you should always pay attention to the psalm. But I'm referring to it in a sermon, so really pay attention to the psalm. Please. Today's first lesson is taken from Psalm 40. 
I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit, out of the merry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and hear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds, your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. And then Jesus said to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, sir, come down before my little boy dies. Jesus said to him, go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So he asked at what hour would he begin to recover, and they said to him, Yesterday at one in the afternoon the fever left him. The father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. And after this there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there was a pool called in Hebrew Bethsaida, which has five porticos. And though these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed, one man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had been there a long time, and he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath. Is it not lawful? It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered him, the man who made me well said to me, take up your mat and walk. And they asked him, who is this man who said to you, take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared in the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him in a temple and said to him, see, you have been made well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews started persecuting Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is still working, and I am still working. For this reason, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but was also calling God his own father, therefore for making himself equal to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May be seated. As I said at the beginning, there's only three healing stories in John. Um, and as I've said to those of you and people I'm seeing have all heard me preach, so you've heard me say this before, I don't worry a lot about what's not in the Bible. I worry about what's in there, or I pay attention to what's in there better than worry. 
And, and so, you know, John only puts in three healing stories, and none of them is an exorcism. He only puts in three healing stories. Um, then, then let's take a look at it. Um, it's interesting. There's some distinct differences between these stories, and of course, they are similarities, the first and foremost being their healing story. Uh, they happen in two different places. Jesus moves a lot um, in John. Um, there's movement in a lot of the Gospels, but like in Luke, he's progressively going to Jerusalem. Um, and then no one doubts that Jesus goes back and forth to Jerusalem. Luke has that. Matthew has him going there when he's 12. But in John, we see like a faithful Jew. He's going to Jerusalem for all the big holidays, which would be expected that at least twice a year um, for Passover, maybe Yom Kippur, they would come into Jerusalem. And, and so we see this. And so the first one happens back in Galilee, which is up north. Um, and so, and these are, there's no gap. When you read these in the Bible, there's no break between them. So it's continuously where they are. So Jesus was in Jerusalem last week. He now goes, or no, he was in Samaria. He's on his way here. He goes up to Jerusalem. Um, goes up to Galilee. I gotta look at the map. This <laughs> um, goes up to Galilee and goes back to his first miracle, turning the water into wine, and um, and heals this this child that he doesn't see, that he's not even there. Um, he's he's several miles away. You know, it's a two day journey. Um, and, and he's got a desperate father seeking help. Um, the second one, he, Jesus is back in Jerusalem for a festival. Um, nobody's asking for his help. He actually goes to the guy and says, you, you want to be healed? The guy's like, duh. <laughs> um, but, you know, so that, so there are two different places. There's, the first one is, is a big, huge request. It's a father with a sick kid. Um, if you've ever had a sick kid, you get this, right? Or a sick pet or a sick nephew, right? Um, and, and so that's what we have here. In the second one, um, we, have, we have a lame man who's been um, lame for 38 years. And I don't, we're not told how old he is, so we don't know if he's been lame for life, but you know, life expectancy is about that long, so he's, you know, most of his life he's been lame. And, um, and he's, he's by this pool, archaeological evidence, this pool existed, it's spring fed. This is important. Um, so so it, when they wanted to refill it, they would open a little gate. You understand a spring, not, not bouncy, but like watering. Okay, just making sure we're clear. Um, that they would open a gate and the water would fill the pool and then they would close the gate so it wouldn't overflow. That's when the water was stirred, okay? That's what that meant. It wasn't some magic thing. It just meant when they were, you know, refilling the pool. Um, but apparently there was this belief that if you went, if one person went in there when they were doing this, that one person would get healed. And apparently this lame guy was never first. And we're told there's a bunch of people around there with all the, I think they said there's five porticos, you know, gates. Um, and so Jesus goes to, you want to be healed? And the guy's like, yeah, just never get there. So Jesus says, you know, pick up your mat and walk. And that healing is instantaneous. Although we're told the other one is too. But this guy experiences it. Um, and then what happens back in the first story is the father is told that his son is healed, but, but he has to go on faith. And there's this whole dialogue too, right? In the first story, the man is begging to be healed. In the second story, Jesus approaches the guy and says, hey, do you want to be healed? Um, and, and so in the first story, that father has to wait. He doesn't know. And there's actually waiting in the second story. It's just a different waiting, right? 38 years to be healed. Any of you ever waited a long time for your child to get sober, to deal with your own addictions, for relationships to heal with your family, for your body to work? Oh, I'm the only one. Okay. Um, just checking. How about you, Paul? Have you waited a long time for something to happen? All right. Uh, and, um, and so we have this. Now what happens in this first story is this, this Jewish court official, probably worked for Herod, um, goes to Jesus, travels to Jesus, and says, you know, my son is sick. Um, Jesus is like, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna deal with it. I, and the quote, he says, unless you see sign of wonders, you will not believe, meaning, yeah, you're just looking for a magic show. And the guy's like, no, I believe, please. I mean, he just says, please. 
before my little boy dies, you know, and I, as a parent, can totally get this, you know, um, you know, please, um, I, you know, I said in the hospital, with both of my kids having surgeries, um, you know, please. And so Jesus says, and go, your son will live. Um, and, he, and he does. And Jesus never encounters the child. He just gives the command. By the way, Jesus heals with the command in the second story, too. But anyway, here's, there's a lot of places in this passage where our current translation, I don't want to pick on it, but it fails. And this is a place where it significantly fails us. Um, it is 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That is a correct and accurate translation. However, John, the author, his, his story is full of hidden imagery. All right? Full. It's the seventh hour. As in seven days of creation, as in a whole biblical number. And I really think that's intentional that it's the seventh hour. It's not that it's 1 p.m. It's the seventh hour. The, the, they would count the days at 6 a.m. It's the seventh hour. Yes, it's 1 p.m., but I think you need to get the sense that John wants us to know, you know, this, this is the God who created, right? Seven days, seventh hour. And then here's important. This man goes and tells everybody in his whole family believes, right? The next story... The guy gets in trouble with the authorities because he's walking on the Sabbath. He throws Jesus under the bus. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I don't know who did it. He didn't know who did it, right? Um, the first man, he knew who it was. He approached Jesus. Jesus approached this guy. Jesus finds him later, and then the guy goes and rats him out to the authorities and said, yeah, I asked Jesus. And then we see this tension building. But both cases, they get healed. And in both cases, there is a lot of waiting a lot of waiting. Waiting from a dad going home, spending overnight, anxious to get home to see if this happened. A man waiting 38 years with never the opportunity to get to the pool. And we're still waiting here. I hear this more and more. How long? I ask it myself, right? How long with COVID? How long would people be mad at one another and, 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 you know, just rude to one another? How long, Lord? Actually, today I even heard people say, how long is it going to be cold on Sundays, Pastor? <laughs> I don't know. Ask the ground up. Um, but, you know, but how long? I mean, really, how long? Um, and, it's, and it wears on you. Wears on me, and, and I think it's wearing on many of us as, to, as we wait for COVID to go away or at least be controlled, whatever is going to happen. Um, we, we wonder where God is in all of this. Um, God does not work on our time. God has never worked on our time. Um, doesn't mean God isn't working. I think that's very important. And I think the key verse for me out of this whole passage is when Jesus is facing the religious authorities at the end, I'm at the very end of the gospel, verse 17. Um, they're like, you healed on the Sabbath. And Jesus says, my father is still working and I am working also. I mean, yes, God created the Sabbath because humans need rest. But God never gives up. God is always working. God is always moving. Always working to make things. We need to remember that. We need to hold on to it with our own things that we're desperately waiting for healing for. But we also shouldn't give up. This father is an example of trusting that God is working and then proclaiming to his family and his friends what is happening so that all can know God's strength and presence in this life, now and all. I invite you to rise to sing There is a Balm in Gilead. We, we will sing the whole hymn. It's, it's not long. We will sing the whole hymn.
Please join me in confessing together our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. Almighty God, we pray that we would know your presence. We pray for your healing and your strength in our lives. Help us to know that you are with us at all times. Lord, in your mercy. You are and Lord, we do pray for patience, for things we wait for. Help us to trust that you are working and to proclaim to others your presence in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for the church and your people in all places. We especially remember Reformation Lutheran Church in West Long Branch. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for the athletes and everybody at the Olympics. We pray for the ideal of peace and cooperation, and we pray that you would bring peace to the world. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for all who are sick and need. We especially lift up Brett, Matilda, and Carly. Um, Pauline, Ralph, Domino, um, Joyce, Ed, Susan, Eleanor, Kenny, Russell, our sanitation crews removing the snow, our pastor and his family, um, Nikki Morano, Stephanie Parson and family, Rebecca Winters, Paul Falco, um, Uncle Bobby, Jean Barbara, Lorraine Monahan, Walter Monahan, Ruth, Nancy, Jane, Barbara, um, Johnson and Michael. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for peace in our families, among the nations, um, in schools, and help us to have an end of violence in the streets and our cities. Safety for all, Lord, for police officers, for civilians, for everybody. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray. Um, for all those who have died, we especially remember Sue Hayes um, Stasso and um, Bill Stone, Stoner, um, Raphael Cespis, and all those we mentioned before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy now and always. Amen. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. We'll continue with communion. Son, 
Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in this Holy Supper. Amen. Our Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus comes. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We do not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us eat. The body of Christ given to you. <coughs> Body and blood of the Lord Jesus of Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen which the richness of your grace in your Son Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.